We're out here fishing these Montauk porgies. Sometimes they can be a little bit finicky. Not today. Got one on now. I'm in too, buddy. Oh. That's a nice looking fish right there, Joel. And these are really like beautiful this, fish. Whoa, this thing is we pounding definitely put down. us on the piece here. I got twins with fins. Uh-oh. Yay! Oh, look at the size of those. Dinner plate size. That's nice, <laughs> Rich. <laughs> Northeast Angling. We're proud to present inshore and offshore saltwater fishing. We cover every species from fluke and porgies to stripers, sharks, and tuna. You can learn more about techniques, tackle, and destinations at neangling.com. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Well, we're here with Captain Joel Leeser of the Sea Otter Fleet out of Montauk. We're going to anchor up here off of Gardner's Island and try to get some porgies today, right, Joel? Yeah, we're going to try to get some porgies in the boat. Uh, we're gonna, first, we're going to start out putting the chum pot in the water and try to tie off on the bow or the up tied side. See if we can keep the porgies under the boat. See what happens. All right, let's get this started and let's get some fishing in. Okay. Joel, what kind of chum are you putting in there? Uh, we're putting clam bellies, whole clam bellies. Okay. Um, some guys like bunker chum. And open the sound, we used to use bunker chum, but it tends to get too many bluefish around. Yeah, that's that's definitely something you don't want to do when you're pulling fishing, right? And we got this nice frozen block of chum. As it warms and thaws in the water, it's gonna provide a steady stream of scent and bait behind the boat. Not only is it gonna bring the fish to us, but it's gonna keep them around the boat as well. Now Joe, we put this up in the bow because we're gonna be fishing well down tide in this, right? Right. Try to keep it up tide and Fish, we'll get the fish on the way if we have to. If the tide goes stagger, we'll move the chum pot closer to where we're fishing. This sounds like a plan. Let's get it in there and let's get started. And I can say that is one big chum pot you got there, that's for sure, huh? A little overkill, but more is always better. Okay, I hear you on that one. And now, roughly the depth we're in here, how deep are we fishing? We're fishing pretty shallow here. It's about 17 feet okay. right now. But what kind of depth do you usually find these fish at? Sometimes a year, like right now, I know they're talking about it being tough in the deeper water. Um, I don't know for what reason, but right now, seem to be doing better in the shallows. Okay. But you'll get them deep sometimes, it's like 50, 60 feet too. Yeah, sometimes we catch them 60 feet of water, like later in the season here. You get these on the hook. I like to weave them. Um, some people like to just glob them on. I like to weave it through. Just go through a couple times and leave a little bit sticking off the hook. Kind of three or four times. That's how I usually do it. You know, we're using a simple two hook rig here. And put a bait on each. Uh, two or three hooks is going to work either way, and we're probably going to see some double headers. Let's get started. Well, guys, I'm not waiting. I'm going in. I'm going to be in right there. You guys are a little ahead of the game here on me. Now we got, what are we using, four ounce sinker here, Joe? We're holding it right now? Right now, we're managing with four ounces. It might even go lighter. Sometimes we got to use six or eight. As the tide slacks up, you're going to go down, obviously, and as she picks up, we go up a little bit and let. Right. Right yeah. now, it's pretty much low tide or dead tide. Now, you know, one, one thing everybody takes for granted with, with this fishing, I think, is, is this is probably one of the most fun fish to catch. I mean, to get people started at the fishing, to get kids going, I mean, this is something, oh, there we go, fish on. This is something where you can come and, and just about catch these fish almost every day, don't you think, Andy? Well, uh, it's not a difficult fish to catch once they're going. Once you get on top of them, anybody can catch these fish. Oh, and anybody can miss them too, evidently. <laughs> <laughs> but we talk Lots. about, you know, getting kids into fishing and, and stuff like that. I think this is probably one of the best ways to get a kid started into fishing because it's consistent, the action is fun, and it's something you can, you know, like I said, come out here almost every day and do. There you go, Andy. You know, even a guy like me, you drop <laughs> these in, in here and get right on these fish. You notice I got one bait left, so two I'll hooks is a good thing for right me. <laughs> you fishing with bear fishing with bear hooks. But Guys, uh, we got a bunch of cut clams up here. here. You got some in front of you there, so we got plenty of clams if you need it. Now we're releasing most of these fish today, if not all of them. But this is a good eating fish, and you know you can put a bunch of these on the table. Joel, I know they get some pretty broad limits on how many you can take of these. Right now, you're allowed 50, 50 porgies a piece. 
Um, you don't really need that many. Uh, That's a lot of porgies. <laughs> and I'll say one thing, though, with the maybe with the exceptions of sea bass, I think this might be one of the best tasting fish that are around this area. Now you notice. Oh, that's a nice one on the way right there. Look at that that's one. It's a good one. I mean, it's, this is like it, it, I have a feeling just the way this day starts. This is going to be a lot of fun. and It's going to be nonstop action. Yeah. When they start Ready? biting, it is Get out of there, probably the go. most action. And they're, they're very scrappy fish. They're a lot of fun to fight on. We're not fishing that heavy a tackle. It's a pretty light tackle here, and they're a good time. You know, you know, Andy, that, that's a that's a great point. How scrappy these fish are. For some reason, that, the body style of these fish, they just put up such a fight. I can be honest and say that if porgies got to be 20 pounds, I think people would completely forget about striped bass. <laughs> you know, we we always do a lot of striped bass fishing and a lot a lot of fishing for the more exciting fish, so to speak. But I still enjoy these days where we relax, we have a little fun, and we get out and we chase these fish down. I enjoy some good bottom fishing. Joel, I'm just killing you right here. I'm, <laughs> I'm just killing you right you, you got something. Whoa, look at that one. Hey, That's Rich. a pretty fish. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to rig up by the tip. Jeez, you know, I don't I seem to be using the same rig as you. And, you are? Yeah, I'm not so having any problems. No, actually, mine's a little yeah, bit lighter. I thought so. <laughs> Guess I'm getting a little feel, a little more feel. Just a very, very yeah. pretty fish. Here we go. You got one, Angel? I finally got one on. <laughs> you know what? One thing you really should talk about with these fish is handling them. I think one of the most important things to be careful about with these fish is how sharp their fins are on the top. So when you grab them, you want to grab them from the belly. Unhook them, and that's how you want to hold them. Joe, you notice that also with their fins? Absolutely. The fins are major, probably the worst fin I've seen on a fish next to striped bass. You don't want to, you want to stay away from them. Here they give you a nasty little puncture wound. Whoa, and am I missing fish here, guys? <laughs> you know, every you now know, and then you get into the zone and you and you don't miss a fish, and then you know it's like you can't do anything right. But there's a lot of fish down here, and if you stay with it, you're gonna hook them. I got a feeling I'm fishing with almost spare hooks, but I'm gonna stay with this a little bit longer. You talk, I mean, uh, people think, well, what kind of techniques can you use for porgies? But, you know, there, there is ways you can definitely increase your catch by the way you set the hook, by the way you, you feel for the bite. Sometimes you gotta wait on a bite a little bit. You know, you get a little bit of weight before you feel that tingle. And you don't need to put a particularly big piece of bait on, too. You know, uh, almost any size bait's gonna work. And something bigger or smaller really doesn't matter. You just got to get it on the hook a couple of times. Well, the one thing that I like to do, I know, is when the bite gets better, I like to downsize a little bit. Yeah, you well, know? What do you when think, Joe? When you the fish are really loaded up. Definitely don't feed them too much. You don't need to. The bite's on. Feed them a little as you have to. Right, and use the smallest piece of bait that's going to be working. Now, you said uh, the regulations on the fish, uh, 50 per angler. What's the size limit on these fish now, Joel? Right now, I believe it's 10 inches. 10 inches? Yeah. Nice, Joel. Now, that's a nice looking porgy right wow. there. That's a keeper size. That is a keeper size right there. Joel, how, how big do these fish get? Biggest one we've had on our boat so far is four pounds. Nice. Like a couple around three and a half. But a three pound porgy is pretty big. Four pounds huge. You know, this this is a fish we were talking about. You find a little bit of structure. You get on a pile of these fish, you can, you can really put put some serious fish in the boat in a very short period of time. When this fish is on, it's about the most action you could have. I got to get in the water to get yeah, one. Yeah, get my baits back down here, and I'm <laughs> having problems keeping my, my hooks baited. You know, uh, hook-wise, Joel, I think we're using like a size one hook right now, right? I think we're using a... Gamagatsu bait saver is what we're using. And that's pretty much the average size you use in, in hooks here for these fish. I, I like ones. Sometimes if you get in a bigger fish in the fall, you can step it up a little bit. Um, one's the fifth size I use. Out All right, yeah, I, 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 think, nice I think we got the pool porgy here for now. That's a good one. It might change, but that, that looks like one of the better ones of the day. That's a nice looking fish. You know, one of the things about these fish, we've got our sinkers just resting on the bottom. We're not bouncing them up and down. We just hold them there and just wait for the bite. And I got a pork chop. Oh, we just, look at that. Right at the side of the boat, he let me go. Catch and release. Mm, that, was a, that was a small one. Off. Joel, that was a small one. Very, always a small <laughs> Pretty one. Pretty porgy. Yeah. Look at that. I haven't seen a double header yet, though. We usually, when the bite's on, get some double headers. All right. Some guys even get triple headers. 
Well, when you got three hooks on, I guess you get the opportunity to have a triple header, right? Yeah, some guys use three hooks. Yeah. <laughs> three hooks may be a little bit of overkill right here. <laughs> yeah. There is one of us using three hooks. Well, who, who might that be? But the good thing is that <laughs> he gets to lose three times as much bait as we're losing. I've always been a firm believer in the one who dies with the most fish wins, but I'm not too sure about well, you guys. Well, if it's, <laughs> if it's the one who dies with the most hooks, he definitely won. <laughs> Look at this, now I'm not even losing my bait and I'm catching them. Visit the Northeast Angling website at neangling.com for nationwide saltwater charter directory, fishing news, and free fishing reports. You can also find dozens of techniques, tips, and tackle for every saltwater species. Now let's get back to the action. We're back here up at Gardner's Island. And we're really getting the fish here solid now. And what rich you got? It looks like you got a solid <laughs> fish on this that. This guy is digging me hard right here. I, oh, oh, yeah, that's nice. That is a pork chop. That's a dinner plate size, all right? That is a nice looking porky. You know, Joel, we're using clams for these porkies today, but I noticed there's a lot of other baits you can use. What else do you like to use aside from clams for these I fish? I like to use squid when there's some sea bass around. <laughs> Let's have a look at that fluke. fish. Mixed in, but the squid, the squid's a good bait. Uh, it's a little easier to stay on the hook, especially if you got some people that aren't as experienced fishing. And one of the things we're going to do with the baits is we always take them, we cut them into strips, about half an inch wide, and you know, an inch or two long. And like Joel says, you know, the bite starts going good. We downsize and we use a much use a much smaller pieces. You'll hook the fish quicker. You lose a lot less bait. Yeah, I mean, you know, you talk about how aggressive these fish are. I mean, I, I know I've had days where I've actually caught them on spearing. I've caught them on squid. I've caught them on pieces of bunker. So they're aggressive fish. But you would say what the top three baits are probably worms, clams, and squid. Definitely, definitely. We use a lot of clams here when we're just porgy fishing, but. Squid be second to us, and then some worms. Back in the sound, we use a lot of worms. Mm. Worms are the primary. Oh, there we go. There you go, Andy. And you know, if you think about it, it's really a, an inexpensive way to go fishing, oh. too. Because, I mean, you can buy clams, they're very reasonable. You can freeze them. You don't have to worry about wasting them at the end of the day. I mean, so, I mean, frozen clams, fresh clams, for these fish, when they're on, it really doesn't make much of a difference, does it, Joe? Not too much. When they're on, it's pretty easy, but when it's tougher fishing, you definitely want to hey, see what you can get hunt. going. As far as, when it, sometimes when they're finicky, you only want fresh clams. You didn't call that on the way up? I don't want to say nothing. You thought you had to, didn't you? <laughs> oh. You know, but, I mean, if you think about it, it it's a very inexpensive way to go fishing for the day if you think about really what you have to bring with you. You know, a couple of rigs, a couple of sinkers, and some frozen clams or squid, and you can have a great day doing this. And I, I just have a confession that this is uh, my first saltwater fishing experience was my dad taking me not far from here in the Peconics, and believe it or not, we were fishing for porgies and weak fish. As we said that earlier, it's just, it's a great way to get kids started into the sport of fishing. Because it's, you know, Joel, you operating a party boat in Montauk, you would know this more than anything. You, you got to shy people away from bringing their kids out on a, on a nasty, rough day. You know, when you can take them out on a nice day in the summer, when you pick good conditions and go out and just catch these fish all day. Give them plenty of action. You say kids, but this is actually my dad who's been fishing, I don't know. I don't know when exactly he started, but this is his favorite fish in there is. Is it really? Yeah. You know, guys, I just want to say that we're we're using this tackle, and these fish are putting up quite a battle. This and Rich, you know, what what do you like to use for these? I, you know, I, I stay with the conventionals for the most part. Uh, bait cast, small bait cast conventionals, where we're depending on where we're fishing. I mean, this is this is a new reel from Shimano, it's called a Dakota, and uh, I got 20 pound test braid on here, and it just, you know. It, it's just a nice way to fight these fish. You, you feel every pull, every every shake, every everything. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of feel. And you don't need to fish very heavy tackle here. In fact, you can almost bring your really light stuff out and have a really good time with these fish. Def especially at slack tide. Yeah. You know, there are, Joel, there's occasions you said you got to fish as, what, as much as 8, 10 ounces of lead for these fish when you get them in the current. Definitely. Sometimes 12 ounces. But I've got some customers that fish super ultra lights and they'll try to get down to one ounce when it's slack tide. Just you catch a porgy this big and you think they got a ten pound blue. Fish yes, I said that earlier. If porgy's got to be twenty pounds, I don't I don't think anybody would even Think about going striped bass fishing ever again, because these fish can fight. You know, and uh, it's that body type. Once again, all the flat-bodied fishes are pretty good fighters. They just turn that body into the current, 
They really use the whole body as a lever and try and fight back and stop from being pulled to the surface. You know, Andy, that's a great point. Anybody that's ever caught these fish, their body style, it's a lot like a, a bluegill in fresh water, like a permit down south. And like you said before, they just turn their body into the tide and these things can fight. Yeah. I think it's also the pretty aggressive fish for the size of them. They don't give up. No. Yeah. And they're, they're certainly not shy about taking these baits. <laughs> At least not now they aren't. But Joel, you do say these can get a little finicky at times? Definitely. Sometimes they can turn off, you get a blue fish in the area, or striped bass in the area, they'll just shut them right down. You can have them going double headers and one after another, and a bass or something will come through all of a sudden just shut down. Now, Andy, Andy, I'm looking at that fish. That's, you just mentioned bluegill. That was the key. Uh, you mentioned bluegill, and I just caught one that looks like a, bluegill. a freshwater bluegill. Now, Joel, you think, I know these fish, they can change to their body, to their, to their environment down below also, obviously, to hide from predators. Like that fish Andy had, that was one of the darkest porgies I've seen. That fish, probably a darker bottom, maybe came up on our chum. Oh, double header. Twins. Definitely. That one looks like it's definitely <laughs> from the rock. Now, if Rich had four hooks on, he'd be going for the quad. I don't know how he missed the high hook. I left it down there for an extra second, too. He just didn't jump on it. <laughs> these are fun fish. They really are. You know, you, you talk about up and down fishing. I think we're experiencing that now. This is really Yeah, I got a tide runner here. <laughs> Joel, what else can we expect to see coming by here right now? Sometimes you catch it occasional. Right here, you don't catch that much different species, but sometimes when you're fishing for porgies, you'll catch sea bass, catch an occasional fluke. You know, weak fish also, right? See some sometimes. Not too many right here. I haven't seen recent, but do catch them. Well, you know, you got to think about it. You got a, a big jump pot up front, and you got a big slick going. And you, you would think anything that's down tight in a boat is going to come up to take a look at this, wouldn't you think, Andy? Yeah, and, and we, even though we don't have a lot of tide running now, whenever you chum, you know, the longer your chum's in the water, in fact, it's important also to make sure you freshen that chum every now and then. But the longer your chum's in the water, the more fish you're going to draw to the boat. And you never, like Rich says, you never know what's going to come up. See, I paid the price of getting the double header with, uh, with my three hooks here. And you know, Joel, you talk about this all the time. What do you think of the three hook rig here for porgy fishing? <laughs> I fish two rigs, two hooks normally, just a little less tangles. But uh, everybody's got their preference. I see some guys use four, <laughs> but uh, I'm a two hook. Well, I can't imagine what four of these fish coming up at once have got to feel like on this tack. Oh, I can feel like. I've had that before. Because, <laughs> you know, these are really great scrappy fighters. You know, you said something about chumming before. You know, sometimes I like to leave chum pot. If you don't have too much tie, leave it so it's just tied off, just bouncing on the bottom so it's moving a little bit, shake out a little bit of chum. Quick release. Uh, Visit the Northeast Angling YouTube channel for hundreds of videos, including full-length episodes, exciting clips, product reviews, and instructional videos. And now, the exciting conclusion of Northeast Angling. Well, we're back here off of Gardner's Island with Joel Lisa from the Sea Otter. Joel, this bite's starting to slow down a little bit. Right now, I think it might be a good time to check the chum pot out. I'm going to maybe add some chum, I think. Bite gone away. Get us going again? Yeah, it's so important you. to have a good steady flow of chum behind the boat. That's what's going to keep the fish around the boat and keep us going. I got a little hey, got one, got one straggler here. Yeah, it's been slow over where I am. Oh, that's a nice fish. Come here, you. Not a bad fish there, Rich. That's one thing you're right, though. You really want to keep an eye on that. You know, sometimes you'll lose the bite when a tide slacks out. Or other times you'll just notice that, you know, you're out of chum. Yeah. Anything left up in that, Joel? Not too much. A little bit, though. We're going to add some anyway. Get that scent going again. Yeah, it's not something to be stingy on. You really want to keep a good, good supply of chum. And make sure when you come out here, you got plenty of clams and lots of chum. You know, we're fishing clams. Joel, what other baits uh, would you find useful work for these porgies? A lot of times we use squid. Here, uh, I know back in the sound we use a lot of worms we used to use, but I like clams first, squid second, and say worms to be third. And as a bycatch, Joel, what else do you come into with these fish? You run into a lot of other species? Different areas, but like here we'll catch some sea bass, sometimes we'll catch some fluke, uh, occasional fluke comes up to the chum. Um, 
a couple of bass once in a while. I've seen a couple of weak fish. Not too often a weak fish here though. Well, I guess if you got a good stream of chum going off the back of the boat, pretty much whatever back there is going to follow up in that slick eventually, right? Definitely. I mean, sometimes we have occasional problem with bluefish. That's why we use clam chum. Bunker chum we usually use in the sound. But it uh, seems to be a problem here. You get too many bluefish going. That makes sense. Well, let's wait till the chums start working and get in some more fish. Let's get back on its bite again. Joel, you really got us into this uh, good Montauk porgy bite. What are different ways people can experience this? Say most people would go porgy fishing on a party boat. Uh, some guys take a private charter out and they do a porgy fishing or striped bass fishing as well. A mix. So that means like they'll do like stripers in the morning and then switch over to a porgy or fluke or sea bass a little later on. Right. Most guys do the bass thing first and then try something else. Oh, oh, we just got one in there. Now, Joel, you said the limit on these fish, I believe, are 25, uh, 50 per angler. 50 per angler, 10 inches. And you say, uh, you know, it's, it's not uncommon for these guys to come out on a boat and just limit out on a regular basis on, on, geez, on porgies this side. When the bite's on, it's pretty common to limit out. You know, it's definitely tough days sometimes. You That's know, it, it's not just about the porgy fishing or the Montauk fishing. It's about the whole Montauk experience. There's just so many things to do here. Yeah, no, I agree with you, Andy. It's, a, it's definitely a fun place. Plenty of porgy fishing in the fall. There's all kinds of fish to be caught. Um, plenty of things to see. My wife and I bought a house out here about 10 years ago now. And uh, we're staying right now. And, uh, some great restaurants and some good nightlife and just, you know, beautiful places to stay. And that was a heck of a bogey you just caught. That was, that was a nice fish. That was a big fish. We really, we really got the bite going here. We put some fresh chum down. That's, you know, and that was, yep. These fish are hot, and there's plenty of them right now. Well, we said we had a little bit of lull in the action. You know, we asked Joel what we could do, and yeah, that's the first thing he turned to was right away. He said, well, maybe we're done a little low on a chum, and, you know, not Ooh. for nothing, but since then, it's been up and down. Action steady now. Yes, I agree with uh, that. There we go. This is what you call fun fishing right now. Look at this, one after another. Yeah, they're beautiful, and they're beautiful. Well, Joel, I want to thank you for having us out here today. Uh, this bite was everything that you promised us. This fishing's just been fantastic. Another one on. Pretty consistent action. I want to thank you for coming. It's been a while since I got out here. Just to take my dad out. Uh, Hope to have you guys out again sometime. Yeah, this is a great way to spend a day and enjoy some family fishing. And it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, this is something you really got to get the kids out to do because it's an experience that they're definitely not going to forget. Well, we're definitely going to be back, Joel, and thanks for having us today. Thank you, guys. Hope to have you again. Thank you. Thank you for watching Northeast Angling. You can learn more about techniques, tackle, and destinations as seen on this show at neangling.com. See you on the water.